Read the prayer list. Well, after. Yeah, get up here and read the prayer list real quick or stand up and read it. Okay. Okay, this is the prayer list. This little girl, Brixton Dyke, she's five weeks old, she had a major heart condition, and her parents are just devastated. Pray for brethren all over the world, especially in U.S., Britain, Philippines, India, Africa. Taylor Ashby, my granddaughter. Marie Barlow, Heather, Michelle, Jasmine, J.C. Branch, Joshua Corley, Shirley Court, Michelle and Matt Cox, Cameron Renee Porch, that's our newest little granddaughter, great-granddaughter. They're having a hard time finding their formula. Right, because it's a shortage and they're probably going to end up go to the but we're hoping that something works out. All right. Guadalupe Gaspino, that's uh, Iris and Manuel's mother. Courtney Foster still has those severe headaches and morning sickness because she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. Drew and Rachel Gibson, Chase Brown, and Brittany Brown. Brittany is pregnant. Mm -hmm. wow. So we've got two more great granddaughters. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Jacob C. Meyer, Sam and Connie Graham, Mr. and Mrs. Jimmy Cakley, Jerry Helan, Robert and Tanya Kirk, Tanya Kirk's mom, mm -hmm. David and Rachel Lawrence. Hilda Dridger, Susanna Mom, Joseph Miller with his prison situation, David Harris, Johnny McCarty. Now, Johnny is still really bad. Oh, yeah. Henry Satterman, Billy Wilson, he lost his wife, Kate. My sister-in-law, Pat Marjota. My sister, Stella O'Quinn. Jessica Angolana, Judy Pyle. Daryl and Barbara Krill. Rosa Blizzard, Sue Dodd. Matthew Dorada, and last, Deborah Walker. Um, also, um, don't mind, if you don't mind adding Dusty, I don't have her last name, though. What is Dusty is the, the little girl's name. She's um, probably 18, 19. She got a call from her mom's work that her mom didn't show up for work. She went home to check, and the mom's boyfriend was dead from an overdose, and the mom was uh, unresponsive. Oh, right. so she's having to make a decision on whether to pull the plug on her mom. This happened the day before yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Uh, uh, okay, let's go before Yahweh in yes. prayer. Father in heaven, Yahweh, thank you for this Sabbath day and what it does teach us. It teaches us things past, present, and future. I come before you, Father, as a man broken physically. And I ask you, Father in heaven, for the mind, heart, and spirit to always remain faithful to you, to always be on fire for you and Yahshua. And that goes for all of us here and all of your people around this world, on fire for your word, on fire for your truth. I ask you, Father in heaven, to, because I am having problems breathing sometimes, just asking you to grant me your spirit, sustain me by your spirit, so that I can do the message that I have prepared for today, or that you prepared for me. And I know that you prepared this long ago, and as I read back over it, and I study back over it, you add many things to it. Thank you for that, Father in heaven. Bless us this day. This is HaShabbat. And we thank you for it. We praise you for it. It reminds us that you are the creator, that you created all things, and that, Father in heaven, when the earth came to destruction, you took only six days to restore it to life, to production, and then you commanded that seventh day of rest. We thank you and praise you for that. And now, Father in heaven, your word says that if we keep the Shabbat, you will be our Elohim and we will be your people. And also, Father in heaven, it reminds us of the coming seventh millennium when the earth will have the kingdom of heaven ruling upon it from Jerusalem 
and Father in heaven, there will be peace, there will be righteousness, there will be plenteousness in this whole earth. We give you thanks and praise. We commit our singing, bless our singing, and bless the speaking, and bless the hearing, and bless those who will, we pray, will be able to watch the videos either now or later on. And we submit these things to you. And, and also, Father, remember those on the, on the prayer list. We all need your intervention and your help. Encourage us, Father in heaven. You know, it's so easy to get down because of physical uh, afflictions. But your spirit can lift us up to greater heights. And so we look to you, we trust in you, and we bless you, Father, and thank you for blessing us. In Yahshua's name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Wipe, wipe my eyes, my eyes are... Oh, this thing went off again. Well, I don't want it to go to sleep. <laughs> Y'all, let's take... Yeah, she's okay. Let's take our hymnals and turn to number 18. Number 18. What's happened here? Okay. Here it is. Uh, 18. Yeah, from the rising of the sun. <laughs> From the rising of the sun till the time that it goes down, the name of Yahweh shall be praised. From the rising of the sun till the time that it goes down, the name of Yahweh shall be praised. For Yahweh is high above the nations, and his glory above the heavens is like unto Yahweh Elohim well upon high on the rising of the sun time that it goes down the name of Yahweh shall be praised the rising of the sun the time that it goes down the name of Yahweh shall be praised from the rising of the sun, till the time that it goes down, the name of Yahweh shall be praised. For Yahweh is the above the heavens, and the earth is the earth. Well, on high, the rising of the sun. The time that it goes down, the name of Yahweh shall be first. Can y'all hear that? Yes. <laughs> Barely. We just need to sing up loud. Yes. All merry and happy and everything. Yeah, that's all right, y'all. Some yes. Kind of, you know, now let's sing the next one. I love the Sabbath day. Yeah. 
Sing one more? Yes. How many more? <laughs> Great is Yahweh. Okay, brethren. Now, do we have some special music by anybody? Tanya? Anybody else? Because uh, what are you singing? If you come up here and sing, then uh, that'll give me a, a chance to catch my breath. I'm going to turn it over. You're going to come up here? Yeah, I think Lydia's going to sing with me. Okay, I'm going to. You good with that one? I'm going to. I'm going to. Oh. <laughs> you see what happens? What? Uh, maybe. Here we go. I'll just let y'all. Y'all be. No, it's all right. I'll let y'all be beside me. Yes. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. There's no difference what folks say. I'm going to serve him anyway. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's my yard. Stand up and shout it if you love my I can't Yeshua. stand up. Stand up and shout it if you love my God. I want to know, I want to know, do you love my God? He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's 
the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Makes no difference what I'm saying, I'm going to serve him anywhere. He's my rock, my shield, my shield, he's my love. Sit down and whisper if you love my Yahweh. Sit down and whisper if you love my yah. I want to know, I want to know if you love my yah. He's my rock, my rock, my shield, he's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Makes no difference what folks say, I'm gonna serve him anyway. He's my rock, my soul, my shield, he's my God. Go out and make it if you love oh, wow. my Yahshua. Go out and make it if you love my God. I want to know, I want to know, do you love my God? He's the rock, my sword, my shield. He's my wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. There's no difference what folks say. I'm going to serve him anyway. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's my rock. Hallelujah. Yes. Anybody else? What happened to you, Caleb? You used to want to get up here. You and Dominic both. Well, you know, brethren, we sang that song uh, about the Sabbath day. And what does the commandment say about the Sabbath? You know, the Jews today say that the Sabbath day is only for them and any any non, non-Jew that keeps the Sabbath day is worthy of death. Well, you know, that's interesting because, and this isn't part of my message. I guess it is because I'm talking about it. But, uh, but in the commandment, let's go to Exodus chapter 20. says remember or memorialize you know the sabbath day is a memorial a remembrance memorialize or remember hashabat or I, I can't remember i don't have the hebrew before me but if the day, word day is in there it'd be hayom shabbat but i don't believe hayom is in there it's hashabat to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day, the world today refuses to keep the seventh day. They keep the first day. They'd rather follow the commandment of a man, the commandment of Constantine and the Pope at Rome than they had their own creator. But the seventh day is Hashabbat, of Yahweh, your Elohim, in it you shall not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant or your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor the stranger that is within your gates. I mean, what did Yahweh do? He, he included animals. He included the animals. Because the cattle, the, the oxen, were used as work animals. So, that's what we're here to do today. 
We're here to memorialize the seventh day Sabbath. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Yahweh. Yes. Now I want to continue pretty much in that series that I started on uh, on Yahshua in the scriptures. And uh, it's a pretty long article that I wrote. But you know, back when I wrote it, I didn't have as much information available to me as I do today. And I could go back and rewrite it. I know. Yeah. No, uh, I, I was saying I didn't know whether the day, whether the word Yom is in there or not. I didn't think so. Yeah, I, I know, but when it says remember the Sabbath day, it's not Yom in there. In the first one? Okay. Hayom Shabbat? Okay. Well, I didn't have an interlinear in front of me, so sometimes they go ahead and put the word day in there, you know, where it's not supposed to be. But anyway, uh, what I want to do is I want to start out today with the arrangement of the tribes of Israel around the uh, around the the uh, tabernacle, and here is here's a representation of it. And if you go over here to the book of Numbers, chapter two. Uh, you know, for me, when I was looking into this, it was revealing and inspiring. And so the order and the arrangement of the camp is in the book of Numbers. Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of his father's house. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch far off. You know, uh, this representation, of course, I got this out of somewhere else, but I mean, I do have uh, the, uh, the ones on the side far off, but the ones in the back and, and in the front are close, but that's because I was going to run out of paper. I didn't have it that way. So if we look at that word uh, standard with the ensign of his father's house, standard comes from the Hebrew word degel. We spell it D-E-G-E-L and it means a flag or banner. Ensign comes from Oat, Aleph Wah Tom, meaning a signal as a flag, beacon, monument, omen, prodigy, evidence, mark, sign, or token. So the standard was simply a flag with the sign, the mark, or symbol of each of the sons of Israel displayed on it. Yahweh set the tribe of Judah in the east, and, and as you can see here, the tabernacle is going this way, and the only opening is here to the east. And Judah, with his companions, were to be in the east. They were, uh, they were right in front of the door and I say right in front, they were still far off. 
because Moses, Aaron, and Aaron's sons were in between Judah and the other uh, tribes in the east. So uh, Judah was in the east, and the interesting thing is the name Judah is yod Hey wa dalit Hey. The Dalit is a picture of a door. If you take the Dalit out, you've got yod Hey wa Hey, the name Yahweh. Well, actually, uh, Judah would mean he praises Yahweh. And uh, tomorrow, I'm going to get into uh, some things that uh, that speak pretty uh, pretty bad about the way uh, the Israelites were. But he said the tribe of Judah in the east. He has the dalit. He has the uh, the letter that resembles a door in his name, and so he's at the door. And they have their standard. Uh, the standard that on the east side toward the rising sun shall be, they be of the standard. Well, Iskur, Zebulun, and Judah were in the east toward the rising of the sun. And they had the standard of the camp of Judah to pitch throughout their armies. And Nashon, the son of Amminadab, shall be captain of the children of Judah. And his host and those that were numbered with them were three score and fifteen thousand and six hundred. And those that do pitch next to him shall be the tribe of Issachar. Netanil, the son of Zuar, shall be captain of the children of Issachar. And his host and those that were numbered thereof were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. Then the tribe of Zebulun and Eliab, the son of Helan, shall be captain of the children of Zebulun and his host. And those that were numbered thereof were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred. I've never tried to look for my name in the scriptures, but there's Helan. All that were numbered in the camp of Judah were an hundred thousand and four score thousand, six thousand and four hundred throughout their armies. These shall set forth first set forth. That's numbers two, three through nine. Now, as I looked at the names, uh, I've already said that the meaning of the name Judah, he will praise Yahweh. But Issachar means uh, he will bring a reward. Now, Yahshua was born of the tribe of Judah. Uh, his mother and uh, Joseph, well, of course, Yahweh is in heaven. Yahweh was his father. He didn't have a human father, but his mother was of the tribe of David, who was Jewish, or Judah, Judah. And even his uh, his stepfather, Joseph, Yosef, was of the uh, tribe of, uh, of Judah. But he will bring a reward, and Zebulun means dwelling, habitation or dwelling. So Yahweh was going to bring a reward through Yahshua the Messiah so that... Uh, or he was going to be a reward for them, right? I mean, that's what Yahshua was going to do. He was born of the house of Judah, and he will praise Yahweh, and that's what he did all of his life. He was loyal to Yahweh. And uh, and he, he was the reward for the people so that he could be or they could be his dwelling. He could live in them. Next came those of the south, 
on the south side shall be the camp of Reuben, according to their armies. And the captain of the uh, children of Reuben shall be Elizur, the son of Sedur, and his host. And those that were numbered thereof were forty and six thousand and five hundred. And those which pitched by him shall be the tribe of Simeon. And the captain of the children of Simeon shall be Shel Shelumiel, the son of Zerishadai. And his host and those that were numbered of them were fifty and nine thousand and three hundred. Then the tribe of God, Gad or God, it's actually pronounced God, and the captains of the Son of God shall be Eliasaf, which means together, the son of Ruel, and his host, and that were numbered of them, were forty and five thousand six hundred and fifty. All that were numbered in the camp of Reuben were an hundred thousand and fifty and one thousand and four hundred and fifty throughout their armies, and they shall set forth in the second rank. Then the tabernacle of congregation shall set forth with the camp of Levites in the midst of the camp. As they camp, so shall they set forward every man in his place by their standards. That's verses 10 through 16. Well, uh, Reuben means behold a son or see a son. So Yahshua, once again, is the son. Simeon means to hear intelligently. And God means a troop. So when you see the son, people are going to not only see him, but they're going to hear him intelligently. And he's going to bring a troop with him. Now, Levi. Levi was the central tribe. They were posted all around the tabernacle. There were uh, three, three basic tribes. And I'm going to go into that in just a little bit. But uh, Levi means to join. Means to join. So they were to join the people with Yahweh. And they were always located in the center of the tribes. The descendants of Rachel were in the western regions on the west side, verses 18 to 24. On the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim, according to their armies, the captain of the sons of Ephraim shall be Elishema, the son of Amiud. And, and there's meaning to every one of these names. And I haven't, I, I actually, uh, I should have done that long ago, but I just didn't look into all the meanings. But I'm going to try to do that. You need a meaning of the name to say something. Huh? You need a meaning of the name to say something. I, I don't need it right now. I, uh, I don't want to take too much time. Anyway, the sons of it, the captain of the sons of Ephraim shall be Elishema, the son of Amiud, and his host and those that were numbered of them for 40,500, and by them shall be the tribe of Manasseh, and the captain of the children of Manasseh shall be Gamaliel, the son of Pedazur, and his host, and those that were numbered of them were 30 and 2,200. Then the tribe of Benjamin, and the captain of the sons of Benjamin shall be Abadan, the son of Gideoni, and his host, and those that were numbered of them were thirty and five thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered of the camp of Ephraim were an hundred thousand and eight thousand and an hundred 
throughout their tribes, and they shall go forth in the third rank. That's verses 18 to 24. Well, Ephraim means double, double fruit. Manasseh means to forget, and Benjamin means the son of the right hand. So through the son of the right hand, which is Joshua the Messiah, if you go to Psalms 110, he's on the right hand of Yahweh. If you go into the New Testament, there's many, many, many sayings and writings about Yahshua being on the right hand of the Father. Right? So the son of the right hand will cause Yahweh to forget our sins and bring forth double fruit. He's going to double the fruit because everybody dies for their sins, but he's going to resurrect his people and they're going to have a double life. This first life is a life of passing through this world, temporary. We're strangers and pilgrims in this world. But the next life is the life where he will resurrect his people, write his law in their hearts and minds, and they will live with him forever. Finally came the northernmost part of the camp, consisting of Dan. Dan means judge. Asher and Naphtali. Uh, Asher means happy, and Naphtali means or Naphtali means my wrestling. The standard of the camp of Dan shall be on the north side by their armies, and the captain of the children of Dan shall be Ahizir, the son of Amishadai, and his host, and those that were numbered of them were three score and two thousand and seven hundred. And those that encamped by him shall be the tribe of Asher. And the camp of the children of Asher shall be Pagiel, the son of Akron, and his host and those that were numbered of them were four, forty and one thousand and five hundred. Then the camp of Naphtali, the captain of children of Naphtali, shall be Ahira, the son of Enon, and his host and those that were with them, numbered of them, were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered of the tribe of Dan were an hundred thousand and fifty and seven thousand and six hundred. They shall go hindmost with their standards. That's twenty five through thirty one. So the real judge is Yahshua the Messiah. Well, Yahshua did say, I judge no man. Well, he wasn't going to judge anyone in that day, but once he was resurrected, he was qualified to be a judge. And because of his wrestling, you know, when he was in the wilderness of 40 days and 40 nights, Satan came tempting him, tempting him and that was a wrestling match. And Yahshua won out. But then he had to wrestle with who? The Satan's emissaries, who were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So the whole time he was here, he was wrestling, but he endured, he overcame, and so he is Asher, happy, and that makes us happy also, because that gives us occasion and opportunity to be forgiven, sins forgotten, be resurrected, and enter into the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Now each tribe was to dwell around the tabernacle according to Yahweh's arrangement under their standard. But the chief tribe would possess the governing standard. So what Anybody know what the standard of Judah was? A lion. A lion is the king of beasts. And so 
He is the one who would have the governing standard. Uh, in Genesis 49.9, Jacob prophesied and he said, Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, from the prey. My son, you are gone up. He stooped down. He crouched, couched as a lion and as an old lion who shall rouse him up. Now the standard of the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh in the West was an ox. The, uh, the prophet Jeremiah writes in uh, 3118, I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. You have chastised me and I was chastised as a bullock. And so his standard was the bullock. Unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn you me and I shall be turned. For you are Yahweh, my Elohim. So, now Judah was in the east. And uh, if, if Yahweh's not present, if Yahweh's not present, then the people begin to fight among themselves, right? Well, when Yahweh destroyed the temple, as we look at it in today's world, we have people called the Jews. Many Amalekites are mixed in with those Jews. But Jews, the Judah, under the banner of a lion, what does a lion do to an ox? What does the high priest do to an ox? But then we're, we're at the end of these days, and that's what's happening now. Uh, Judah is in the process of deceiving the ox, the children of Israel. See, the ox was a work animal. And so most of the people... Most of the people just want to work, you know. Most of, of the Ephraimites, Manassites, and even Benjamites, they want to go out and work. But the lion wants to hunt them down. And the thing about it is, you have the people, the great people of this world, who are billionaires, trillionaires even, and they own everything. And so they know how to deceive and cause people to fall into the trap. And look at, I'm going to go through some things today on what is going on. But, but today is a day for rejoicing. I don't want to leave a, a dark cloud over the Sabbath day. I want to show... Yahweh's deliverance. By the way, the bullock word for that is eagle. And you spell it E or A E G E L. And you have what is modern day called eagle in. Yeah. Eagle in. So modern day is eagle in. Huh? I said I'm well. <laughs> now, okay, okay, people, we we got to keep this going here, and if you're going to talk up, talk up loud enough so people here can hear you, uh, because when when y'all start saying things and you're a long ways from the microphone, then uh, it just comes over as gibberish and people don't know what's going on. So the standard for Reuben in the north was the face of a man. Jacob prophesied, not in the north, but the south. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength. This is Jacob in Genesis 49.3. The excellency of dignity and excellency of power. 
So once again, the name Reuben means see a son. Now, what Yahweh did is he had Moses arrange the Levites around the tabernacle in a, a, a special arrangement that we're going to look at in a minute and we're going to see some, some things. Finally, the standard for Dan in the, in the north was a serpent. Dan shall be a serpent by the way and adder in the path that bites the horses, the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. That's Genesis 49, 17. So notice that three of the standards match three of the faces of the creatures that the Apostle John saw around Yahweh's throne. Uh, Revelation 4, verse 6. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne were four beasts, full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had the face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts each had of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day nor night, saying, Kodesh, 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 Yahweh El Yon, which was, and is, and is to come. Now, notice that each living creature had six wings, which is a description similar to the one that the prophet Isaiah gave in Isaiah 6, 1 through 3. He said, in the year of King Uzziah, the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also Yahweh sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried to another and said, Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh is Yahweh of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now the Hebrew word for seraphim is uh, number 8314 in Strong's Concordance. And it's the word saraph. And the definition is burning figuratively a poisonous serpent, but specifically a saraf or symbol or symbolically creature from their copper color. That's kind of like a copper head, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Generally being translated as firing serpent. Being cold is also huh? Being Yeah. I guess. I don't, I've never seen a king cobra, so I don't know. Now, when Yahweh complained, uh, when Israel complained against Yahweh and Moses because of their discouragement in Numbers 21.5, Yahweh sent fiery serpents among the people to bite them as is recorded in verse 6. And Yahweh sent fiery Seraphim, serpents, seraphim nakashim, among the people. So that was that was fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Uh, you know, there was uh, a god in Egypt, and a serpent god, and what was his name? Serapis. Serapis. He was a seraphim. He's the fallen seraphim. He's the Nakash, the fallen Nakash, who was a seraphim.
and why did the, the people begin to uh, what really made uh, Yahweh angry with the people is that they began to uh, lust after flesh and they they turned around and spoke evil of the manna that sustained was sustaining them the most beautiful and perfect food and which is a type of Yahshua the Messiah and they didn't know it and so they uh, they were embittered and he always sent serpents to bite a bunch of them and then yet Moses had to uh, well when the people came in to get to Moses and repeat repentance Yahweh commanded that a fiery serpent be put on a pole. Uh, verse 8. And uh, so he made a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And it came to pass that everyone that was bitten, then he looked upon it and lived. Now, it's my premise that the standard of the tribe of Dan would have been an eagle with a serpent in its claws. This reveals that the standards surrounding the tabernacle in the wilderness were similar to the four faces of the cherubim that Ezekiel saw and the four beasts that John saw, a lion, an ox, a man, and an eagle. And you know when... Uh, When Balaam, the son of Beor, was called by the Moabite king, Balak, to curse Israel, then Balaam saw this heavenly arrangement, and all he could do was be inspired to bless. So, uh, the Levites were to unite the people it means attached, or it comes from another word, lava, which means to twine by implication to unite, to remain, also to borrow uh, as a form of obligation, or to lend. And they were to teach the people about Yahweh, His commandments and His ways, and they were to keep the people attached to and united with Yahweh. Now, Kohath, the Kohathites were in the south between Reuben and his group. Reuben, Reuben had the face of the man, and the Kohathites had, uh, had they, you know, the Levites were divided into three tribes. It was Kohath, Gershon, and Mirar, and uh, the Kohathites handled the vessels of the tabernacle, the menorah, the table of showbread, the uh, uh, altar of incense, and the uh, altar in the, of sacrifice, and all that. Now, the reason why is because they were under the uh, standard of a man. And it takes a man with the spirit of Yahweh to be able to understand what those vessels represented. And so they had to have, and they should have had the intellect of the spirit to explain to the people exactly what these vessels mean. The uh, Morarites were on the side of Dan who had the serpent and what does the serpent do? It travels on the ground. Well, they handled all the boards and, and all of the skeleton of the uh, tabernacle it, that was attached it to the ground. Then we had the, the Gershonites in the rear. And, and let's see. Uh, Kohath means it's from an unused root. Kohath, the ones in between uh, Reuben and 
and the tabernacle are 69 55 inch strongs. And it means to ally oneself or to be allied. Now, Merari, which has to do with the serpent, uh, it's, it's a primitive root. It means bitter. And isn't that what the serpent does? The serpent embitters everyone. It means to trickle. It comes from a root word, marar. And very, by the way, the name Mary or Miriam comes from the same word. It means to mar or to be bitter. So marar means to trickle but also uh, to be or make bitter. And, and so uh, that's what the serpent does. Now Gershon. Gershon was in the rear of the tabernacle in the west, in between Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin. And Gershon is uh, 1648 in Strong's Concordance. It's from 1644. It means a refugee. 1644 is garage. And it means to drive out from possession, especially to expatriate or divorce. And it's translated as cast up or cast out, divorced, divorced woman, drive away, expel, put away, trouble thrust out. So is that not what happened to Ephraim? You know, uh, when Israel separated between the southern and northern kingdom, well, uh, they were... Yahweh finally took uh, the Ephraimite kings and their ten tribes away in, in, uh, in captivity to uh, Asher, or to uh, Nineveh, to the, uh, let's see, what were they called otherwise? Anyways, Ninevites, Ninevites, Assyrians, by the Assyrians. Well, brethren, we're in the, we're in the last days. And we're at the culmination of uh, this country and this world as we've known it. I've got an article here that I pulled off of uh, the internet. And it says, Red Alert. Red Alert. Russia and China. Well, what is China? The land of the dragon. The land of the dragon. What is Russia? The third Rome. And they're planning a simultaneous attack to eliminate the United States and occupy North America. That's a pretty good article here. I got it off of... Uh, off of... Uh, naturalnews.com Mike Adams and one of the things I watched his program and he said one of the things that they're going to do is they want to weaken the country and one of the ways that they're going to weaken the country is to destroy the food source and food supply yep. Sorry, yours broke off Tanya is trying to reconnect. So I've got here, Lynn Powell, it's back on me. I have this from Lynn Powell. She posted on the internet. And uh, so many of our food plants, warehouses, storehouses and all, she's got a list of 95. 95 that have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. fire. Either that or are places where they raise chickens, turkeys, ducks, 
and all that. I mean, they're destroying the food source. Well, they're doing what, what the serpent wants. Here's another one. Here's another one. Soaring diesel prices are hammering the trucking industry, leading to more inflation on nearly everything. But they want to do away with diesel. Yeah. That means that most of your tractors, farm tractors, are diesel. But I mean, with the soaring gas prices, what farmer can can afford to plow and plant, you know? And so they're breaking down the supply lines. Here's another one that I got off today. American America plunging into third world status as police run out of fuel and say they won't respond to 911 calls because of gas prices. Our neighbors, they recently went on the trip. They went to eight different states. I don't remember what state it was, but he said one place, gas was $10 a gallon. Another one, transportation shockwaves reverberate as consumer demand plummets amid unyielding inflation. Well, everything's going up. And, and it's getting... You know, by the time feast comes around, how many of us are going to be able to, to afford to go? Well, but will there be uh, even be fuel available? You can stop it now. You like the hands. Yes. Here's the last article that I pulled off of uh, Henry Maykov today. Biden is destroying U.S. military, say, retired generals. Well, they're shooting them all with this stupid shot. Yeah, that they approved just recently. And now we have the World Economic Fund uh, Foundation, World Economic Foundation, WEF. And they say, our forum, and they say, you will own nothing, and you'll be happy. You'll be on. You'll own nothing. So, let's run over here to the book of Revelation, chapter twelve. I've looked at this and looked at this and thought about these things. And I, if you know the scriptures. Yahweh's got a plan of escape. This old Bible's about had it. So has this old man. Revelation 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. This is the body of the Messiah. This is Israel. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. Okay, so, uh, you know, to me, the great red dragon, physically speaking on this earth, is actually red China. Physically speaking. Now, I know that Satan is the great, great red dragon. And he is spirit. But he is P.O.'d. He's angry because he knows his time is short. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven 
and did cast them to the earth. Okay, a third part of the stars. When, when Joseph had that dream, he saw the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars, and they were bowing to him. Well, a third of the stars would be four of tribes. He drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Well, who do we have affiliated with Judah? We have Benjamin. We have uh, the Levites. And we have, uh, what's the other tribe? Simeon. Simeon. And uh, what did Jacob, what did Jacob say about Simeon and Levi? Let's let's just keep our fingers here and let's go to Genesis forty nine. Verse 5, Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. So a lot of these people today who call themselves Judah, Jews, they are Simeon and Levi. They're instruments of cruelty, and that instrument is Freemasonry. Because Freemasonry is the spirit of of Cain, who slew his brother, Abel. O my soul, come not you into their secret. And all of their, all of their, uh, the Freemasons, all of their, 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 they have secrets. They have all kinds of images, but they won't allow you to interpret those. And they won't give the interpretation because they're secret. Come not you into their secrets, unto their assembly. My honor be not you united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they digged down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Back to Revelation 12. Uh, picking up in about the middle of verse 4. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto Yahweh into his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of Yahweh that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in, the, in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. He wants to cause people to sin, to fall short of the kingdom of heaven and then go before the throne of Yahweh and accuse. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb 
and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Well, you know, if you take everything away from a person that they have, are they going to love their life anymore? I mean, what kind of life are you going to have if you can't build, if you can't plant, if you can't reap? You know, and that's what the World Economic Fund is is bent on doing. By 2030, they want to have everything in their possession. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Yep. <laughs> well, but what that does, I'm not, I hate to say this is a good thing, but what it, what it will do is people are going to look for something better. And when the good news comes to the people, they're going to have hope and they'll be willing to die for the kingdom of heaven. And that's the part I want people to focus on. That's right. <laughs> so much, yeah. yeah, because when the, when the mighty rise through the heaven with the good news, yeah. they're going to be like in the book of Jeremiah. Oh, man, yeah. we've inherited lives. Because yeah. Absolutely. Well, and not only that, but we're strangers and pilgrims just passing yes, through. This isn't no our matter life. what we build for ourselves, no matter what we amass for ourselves, we die and we leave it behind. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows he has but a short time. And when the dragon saw or perceived that he was cast Unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. Two wings of a great eagle. Brethren, let's go over here to uh, Exodus 19. Keep your finger here in Revelation 12. Well, I'll get to it sooner or later. My, my fingers are getting uh, too thick, I guess. Too frail, maybe. Let's look at verse 3. Exodus 19, 3. And Moshe went up unto Elohim, and Yahweh called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say, to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles wings and brought you unto myself that great eagle is Yahweh back to Revelation chapter 12 And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she was nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out his mouth as, uh, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Well, what is this but an army? And they're outfitting 900 ships or more. China is right now in order to invade America. You know, the thing about it is China built a great fleet a long time ago. And they were going to attack Japan and conquer Japan. And guess what? Yahweh brought a big storm up and he smashed the heck out of them, you know. And they were uh, 
their their intentions were foiled. Okay, so he cast a, a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Yahweh and have the witness of Yahshua the Messiah. The testimony, the witness. So brethren, you know, the more we're going to witness of Yahshua the Messiah, the more we're going to be hated. And, and we can already see that going on in the, uh, in the prison system in Ohio. I mean, you've got people who absolutely hate Yahweh, Yahshua, Sabbath, and I'm telling you, there. Joseph Miller filed a lawsuit, and he he hired a, a lawyer that uh, said he'd never lost a case. But you know what he did the other day after a hearing? He wanted to toss in the towel. He wanted to toss in the towel. Now they did give the, a right to be able to meet together. Four at a time. I mean, all other groups, you know, uh, Christians, Muslims, Satan worshipers, and all, they can all gather together. They can use the facilities and so forth. But our people are restricted. Well, that's the judgment that's going to come on those people. And they are lying through their teeth. I mean lying through their teeth. And Joseph doesn't really realize what what's happening, I don't think. But they they have actually manipulated things from the from the top down through lies, through hatred, through deceit. So we we just need to get ready. Store up as much food as you can, but brethren, you know. Yahweh will deliver us in his time. Always look to him and he will provide. He provided for Israel. And, and you know, you can be starving and, and somebody out of the blue can come and bring you some food. That happened to my, my parents during the Great uh, Depression. So, uh, you know, things are going to get pretty rough. But we need to be praying to Yahweh that he'll give us the strength and the help that we need to be able to face up to these trials, these troubles, these problems, stick together, help one another as much as we can. I know we're, we're divided, I, I, not divided, but necessarily, but in space, in, in uh, you know, we got... We got Robert and them from Huntsville. We got y'all from uh, from Louisiana and and others. But Yahweh will bring His people together, and He's gonna He's gonna deliver His people. So all praise, honor, and glory to Him. I know many gloom things are going to be happening aren't happening now, but we need to get ready and be prepared. And the only way to get ready and be prepared is in Yahshua through the Heavenly Father Yahweh. So let's go before Yahweh's throne. Father Yahweh, we thank you so much for your message of hope. You are Yahweh. You have the power to deliver. When the earth came to destruction, you recreated it. And Father in heaven, You've delivered your people time and time again. You delivered your people from Pharaoh when they were in, in slavery. And that's what the WF is doing today is totally enslaving the people. But you are the ultimate savior and deliverer through your son, Yahshua the Messiah. And we look to you 
and we put our hands in your hand, ourselves in your hands, because your hands are able to bless, to heal, and to, to deliver us. And so we give you the thanks, the praise, the honor, and the glory. And Father in heaven, help us to continue with our fellowship here. Bless our fellowship. Bless the food that is prepared for us. Thank you for the spiritual food. And now as we partake the physical food, bless it too. Bless our hearts and knit, knit our hearts together as one. And we give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory. And we ask your dismissal now in by and through the name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Amen.